Well, hello there. This is Craig Hain with Triad Math, and I want to talk to you in this video about the math problems that are covered in the course Finite Mathematics, taught at Indiana University and other places, and I want to talk about the problems that are covered in uh, Chapter 5.3 of the book Finite Mathematics. Now, what we'll be discussing in this video are three linear equations in three variables, x, y, and z, and these are the three linear equations. And the question always is, do they have a unique and common solution? What is their solution? How do you find it? So I want you to look at this particular set of three equations and see if you know how to solve it and how you think you would solve it. And then I'm going to show you uh, some different methods to approach this equation. Well, the first thing that you're taught to do in that course is to take this set of equations and create what is called an augmented matrix. Now, all that amounts to is taking the variables x, y, and z, and then in the columns, you're going to write the coefficients of each of these equations, and then what they're equal to is over here, this is the augmented part. So, let's take the first equation. The coefficient of x, since there is no x, is 0. The coefficient of y is 2, the coefficient of z is minus 1, and that whole thing is equal to 8. And then you can see that for the next equation, we get minus 2 as a coefficient of x, then you get a 1, and a 1, and a 4. And down here, you've only got uh, the only variable that isn't uh, that has a non-zero coefficient is y, so that's 3, and the other two coefficients are 0, and this is a minus 6. Now at this point, you might pause the video and see how would you go about solving this set of equations. Now the facts are you don't have to do anything to this matrix at this point the way this is set up. What you do is you look along the rows here and you see if you've got a row that has two zeros in it. And you do. So from here you have 3y equals minus 6. That's this equation, which of course came from up here. Well you can easily solve that. Just simply divide both sides by 3 and you get y equals minus 2. And now you know the value of y. Now, what's the next thing do you think you would do? Pause the video and think a little bit about how, which one of these would you go about next and how would you do it? Well, I would come up and look at this. And I would go back up now and take the row that had one zero in it. And I already knew the value of y. I figured that down here. And so now I've got an equation. Uh, I can. This is 2y uh, minus z equals 8. So I'm going to write that as minus z equals 8 minus 2y. I've already figured out what y is. It's minus 2, and I do the math, and I get minus uh, z uh, equals 12. And so multiply both sides by minus 1, I get z equals minus 12. And so now the only thing remains is to find out what x is equal. And for that, I'm going to use this third equation now. I know the value of y, the value of z, so I ought to be able now to easily solve for x. Just pause the video and do that. Okay, now I'm taking this middle equation. I've got minus 2x equals... 4 minus 1 times y minus 1 times z, and I know y and z, so I've got this equals to 4 minus, and when I put in minus 2 for y, minus 2, minus a minus 12, and I do the arithmetic and I get 20, divide through by minus 2, and I get x equals minus 10, and now I have solved the problem. x is minus 10, uh, y is minus 2, and z is minus 12. Okay, now I want to show you a way that you can do this problem with a marvelous tool. It's also a good way to check your work to see if you made a mistake or not. So you come up here, this is the supercomputer that uh, you can buy for less than a couple hundred dollars and use your own monitor and your own keyboard. And it's got all these wonderful Wolfram tools in it from uh, Wolfram Mathematica. And so I'm going to come over here and uh, let's sh shut that down. And this is a Mathematica notebook, and so I'm going to actually come up here and to the file, and I've already created uh, an example of this, so we wouldn't have to waste a lot of time. And this will pop up. It'll take a little bit to pull it up. This is a fantastic 21st century tool that will solve any kind of a math problem you can imagine. And, and if it's possible to do it step by step, it'll show you how to do it. And so now the problem that we just did... I'm going to come over here and move down a little bit. It's right there. This is the problem that we just worked on. Uh, 2y minus z equals 8 and um, minus 2x plus y plus z equals 4 and 3y equals minus 6. And I said solve it. This is Wolfram Alpha. Now you can do this on any computer, by the way. What you can't do on most computers is save it in a convenient form like I'm doing here in the notebook so I can come back and look at it. 
Uh, my answers were uh, y equals minus 2, that checks out. I've got um, z equals minus 12, that checks out. And whoa, that says x equals minus 9, I got x equals minus 10. Well, did I, where did I go wrong? Let's look at this. Uh, minus 2x, 4 minus y minus z. I got 4 minus a minus 2 minus uh, a minus 12. And then what did I do? I said 4 plus, oh, I said 4 plus 4 instead of 4 plus 2. That should have been a 2 there. So if that was a 2, then I would have 18, and then I would have x is minus 9. So Wolfram um, Alpha let me quickly find my mistake and corrected me for it. I tend to be, by the way, very mistake prone, and that's one of the problems of doing things manually. Usually I have to do them two or three different ways uh, to make sure that I don't make a mistake. But the point being now, you can use this marvelous tool to solve these problems, and so we're going to look at some more problems now. The other thing I will tell you about this Wolfram um, product is you can come over here and you can ask it uh, to do a step-by-step -step solution. So you have step-by-step -step solution, and I clicked on that, and there it is. And now it gives you different choices. You can use elimination. You can use substitution, which is what I did. You can use Gaussian elimination and Kramer's rule. These are all these different ways to solve these problems. Now, the one that I believe that you've been taught, or at least in the video that I looked at, was using what amounts to Gaussian elimination. I just did substitution. And so substitution here shows you step by step what to do. And as a matter of fact, then, if you follow that through, you can come down here and it'll show you exactly what to do for each step. And so this is like having a tutor to show you exactly how to do this if you didn't know how to do it and couldn't figure it out. And you go right down here and it's just doing it step by step by step, essentially what I did. Uh, divide both sides by three, substitute y equals minus two, the first equation, on down and down. And you can follow this uh, very easily if you follow this video and pause it as you go. You'll be able to see how it showed you step by step and it gave you the final answer. So this is like having not only a mathematician to solve your problem, but if it's doable manually, it'll even tutor you and show you how to do it. And uh, I find that to be extremely useful. Okay, now I want to talk to you about a problem that came up in a video that was done for finite math by a guy named Steve. I think he's one of the authors of the book. I used the Chromium browser to bring up that video, and here it is. It was called Finite 5.3. It was in the uh, finite videos uh, that you have, and at about the 15-minute mark, uh, he set up a problem uh, that had to be solved. And uh, the, the, the part leading up to it set it up is fine. I, it's a little wordy and all that, but whatever. But he ends up with this set of equations right here. And uh, the problem now is to solve them. And he's beginning now to set up the augmented matrix for these equations. Now, what I would like to do, first of all, remember this is a study aid, the supercomputer. You're at home studying. Before I even solve them, I'm going to go over and I'm going to enter those equations into... Uh, Wolfram Alpha, I entered them there, and I'm going to hit click enter, and it'll solve them, and it takes about a minute, and there the solutions are, x equals 3, y equals 2, z equals 1, so I know the answer already, and furthermore, if I want a step-by-step -step solution, it can uh, give me a variety of ways of doing it, and uh, the one that uh, Steve uses in the video is, uh, I think, best cause called Gaussian elimination, and basically what Steve does in the video is he goes through a series of transformative steps. Now, he points out that you can interchange rows if you need to or want to, but you can always multiply one row by a constant and add it to another row and then replace that other row. So he goes through a series of about eight different steps, and each one is pretty time-consuming, and he transforms this augmented matrix into this one. And this you might call diagonal form. So you got 1, 1, and 1, and over here you got 3, 2, 1. It turns out then that x equals 3, y equals 2, and z equals 1. So you go from here to here, and that's what the uh, Wolfram uh, Alpha would show you here math, uh, with using Gaussian elimination. Now here's the problem. If you're going to do this step by step, I think it took him about 20 minutes. You can go watch this video yourself and see how long it takes to get to this. Uh, we'll maybe look at it in a second. Uh, he does it you know, very patiently and very clearly, 
And he's, he's very good at about not making mistakes, unlike me. I tend to make a lot of mistakes when I work particularly fast. And if you're on an exam, that's particularly a problem. But in any event, I'm going to show you now the way that I would do this problem. Okay, now I hope this is what you got. I labeled these rows 1, 2, and 3. And what I wanted to do here is I want to create these rows to have zeros here. So what I have to do here, in order to get a zero here, I have to multiply this row by 2 and subtract it from this. So this is row 2 minus 2 times row 3. So I multiply by 2, you get 4 and subtract, you get 0. Multiply by 2, you get 8, subtract, you get minus 8. Multiply by 2, you get 8, subtract, you get minus 6. Multiply by 2, you get 36, subtract, you get minus 22. Now, for the top one, I'm going to take, uh, I have to multiply row 3 by 3 and subtract. And so you go through and do that and multiply by 3 and subtract, and you get minus 9, minus 9, minus 27. Not very hard to do. They keep the numbers whole to make them easy. Uh, in real, real world problems, they're a lot harder because they put in mixed numbers. But now here's the point. This row we're going to leave alone, and now we're going to work on these two, and I want to make one of these a zero. And I can either do it here or here. i got a choice. So which am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use this one because if I multiply 6 by, uh, what, 3 halves, then I'm going to get uh, 9. And then I'm going to subtract it and get zero. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now for the next one is I'm going to take this row here and I'm going to multiply it by three halves and subtract it from here to get a zero here. So try that and do that. Okay, remember I decided, and this was arbitrary, I could have done either one of these, but I want to do the easy one. I'm lazy. So if I multiply this by three halves and subtract it, that'll make it a zero up here. So I did that. Three halves. Uh, times minus 6 is um, minus 9, and then I uh, subtract it and I get 0. So now i got to do this here. i got to take 3 halves, multiply by 3 halves. Now, uh, 3 halves, the 2 cancels, that makes it 4 times 3 minus 12, minus 12. I subtract it, I get plus 3. And you come over here, do the same thing. Take 3 halves, uh, let's see, the 2 divided into 22 is 11. Minus 11 times 3 is uh, minus 33. Subtract it, that means you're adding it, and you get 6. Go through and make sure you understand that. And now we're basically done with the matrices. Now we're ready to simply go ahead and do what I showed you in the first example and solve this for x, y, and z. Uh, now we're no longer going to have to use matrices to do that. So go ahead and see if you can do that. Well, what's the first one you would do here? Well, the simple one is where you have two zeros. You start with that one. So you've got, this is, remember, x, y, and z. So you've got 3 times y equals 6. And you can solve that. That's y equals 2. You divide both sides by 2. That's what Wolfram Alpha, by the way, will show you to do if you use the uh, substitution method. Now, what's the next thing you're going to do? Pause the video and think about it. You know why now. Well, here, you know this, you know what y is, so now you're going to use the one with the, this row that has the zero in it, and you're going to solve for z. So stop and solve for z now. Well, you have got, uh, this is the z column. You've got minus 6 times z equals minus 22, and then you've got to transpose the minus 8y becomes plus 8y. You already know y is 2, so that's 8 times 2. So you've got minus 22 plus 8 times 2. That's minus 6. Divide both sides by minus 6, you get z equals 1. Now you know y and z, that only remains to solve for x, and this is the equation now that will let you solve for, uh, evaluate for x. So let's pause the video and do that. Okay, uh, you're going to take this last equation now. You know y and z. You're going to get 2x equals 18 minus 4 times y, that's minus 4 times 2, because you knew y was 2, minus 4 times z, that's minus 4 times 1, because z is 1. And when you do the arithmetic here, you're going to get 18 minus 8 minus 4, that's 6. Divide both sides by 2, and you get x equals 3. And now you've solved the problem. x is 3, y is 2, and z is 1. Just what he got up here after he went through these eight steps and reduced it to this. This, I feel, is a much more efficient way to do it. It's really a combination of using the augmented matrices, and you want to get them down to where you have one row that has at least two zeros in it, Another row has at least one zero, and then these have to overlap, and then the third row can have three in it. And it doesn't matter where they are in position in this. You don't need to worry about what they are in position. You use them as they come up. And this is the fastest way I know to do it manually. Now, if, now of course, as he points out, if you want to ultimately check it, 
then you got to go back and if you don't have Wolfram Alpha or something to check it with, uh, you go back and you plug in the values for X, Y, and Z into each one of these equations to see if they check out. That's how you actually check them. If someone came along and told you that the solutions were 1, uh, let's say 3, uh, 2, and 1 for X, Y, and Z, uh, you could come up here to any one of these and plug it in and see if it works. And it's got to work for all three of them or you've made a mistake. That's how you check your work. Uh, if you got to do it manually, or if you got a tool like Wolfram Alpha, <laughs> you just let Wolfram Alpha tell you. Okay, now this was problem 19 he did on this video. It was 2x plus 2y minus z equals 8, minus 2x plus y plus z equals 4, 4x minus y plus 2z equals minus 4. Now you got to set up the augmented matrix. Now here's the thing about this. Uh, I like to do some of the calculations as I'm setting it up. Rather than just write this down and then go from there, I like to look at this and say, what can I do that might make this easier? Uh, remember, I can always uh, multiply any row and add it to any other row and then use that in place of the original row. Now, I look at this over here and I see 2, 2, and 4. I could, gee, I could use that probably because if I add these, that's going to get me zeros or I can use this. These are all going to be, uh, it's tempting to use any one of them, really. There's no particularly preferred one here. So what I will do, just for the fun of it, I'm going to use the Z and get rid of these. I'm going to make these zeros down here. So I'm going to write 2, 2, minus 1, and 8. Okay, that's this top equation. Now, instead of writing this equation in, I'm going to do the calculation now. I'm going to add these equations. Since when I add this, minus 1, added to plus one is zero, but then I got to do the same thing everywhere. So I got to add these two and I'm going to get 12. I got to add these and I'm going to get three Y and I got to add these and I'm going to get zero. Oh, I like that. Sometimes uh, things work out pretty nice. I got two zeros here. That's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, to, to get it zeros down here, down for this Z, I got to multiply by two and add. So I'm going to multiply by two and add, and that'll give me a zero here. And then I got to multiply by two and add, and I'm going to get 2 times uh, 8 is 16, and add, I'm going to get 12, and I'm going to multiply uh, 2 by 2 and add, and I'm going to get um, 4, and I'm adding to minus 1, so that's going to give me 3, and I'm going to multiply by 2 and add, uh, and I'm going to get uh, 8. Now I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. Do you see how I'm done? Stop the video. And now just go ahead and solve for X, Y, and Z without doing anything else with matrices. Now the way Steve taught you, you've got to have one, one, and one, and every else zeros in your to do that. And that takes a lot of a lot of manipulation. It's just not necessary now. Take the row that has two zeros in it, and it's under the Y. So you've got three Y is equal to twelve. Can you solve that? Y equals uh, four. Great. Now what are you going to do next? Well, you know why. And so you're going to take the other, the other row of the other zero, and you're going to have 8x equals 12 minus 3 times y, which is 4. Hmm, that's zero. Well, that means x is zero. If I did that right, if I didn't make a mistake, uh, let's see, what's left? Well, now i got to find um, what's left, what I haven't, what I found. I haven't found z yet, right? i got y and i got x, i got to have z. Well, i got to use this one up here now. So I'm going to have minus z equals 8, and then minus 2 times y, minus 2 times 4, minus 2 times x, which is 2 times 0. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 8, that's well, 0 again, so z is 0. So if, there, if there's any justice in the world, I didn't make a mistake, the answer is x is 0, y is 4, and z is 0. Now, you can go away to check that out, it's just plug them back in up here. Uh, that's what he teaches you, and it's a good way to do it. It's a good way to check in a hurry. Uh, I'll put in x is 0 here, and I'll put in z is 0, and that leaves y is 4, and I get 2 times 4 is 8, and that works. And you can do the other three, and it'll work out. I'll also point out that I used the, um, when I did this, I used the z column. I can just easily use the x column. I would uh, challenge you to go through and set up your augmented matrix where you put get to zeros. Uh, well, let's say get zeros here and here. That would be the easy thing to do. And, of course, it will be different now, but it will end up with the same results. There's lots of ways to skin a cat, so to speak, if you'll pardon that crude uh, metaphor. Uh, there are many, many ways to solve this problem. As a matter of fact, now, what we can do, we can go to uh, 
Wolfram Alpha. Uh, my favorite tool today. Because by the way, you can solve calculus problems, differential equations, any kind of linear algebra. In fact, you can solve thousands of STEM problems with this. Well, I put in the equation here, uh, 2x plus 2y minus z equals 8 and so on. I said solve it, and sure enough, there's my solution, 0, 4, and 0. Just So I did it right. I didn't make a mistake. Uh, and again, you can get a step-by-step -step solution, and uh, there's lots of ways to do it. Now, as a matter of fact, let's just take a quick look at this for the fun of it. We're going to use a step-by-step -step solution, and uh, I used elimination, which... Um, uh, is what uh, is what uh, actually I use substitution. Uh, let's look at the Gaussian elimination. Now, I think this is what Steve teaches, I believe. And of course, he wants to get the, the diagonal matrix one 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 there. And there we start out with there's the uh, there's the augmented matrix. Remember, now he starts down through this, and uh, I, I'm not sure this is what he does, but I think this is probably what he does. Uh, quite frankly, it's so time consuming. But here's what you got to do now when you go down and do this and you want to do the Gaussian elimination method. This, is, this works, of course. Naturally, it works. And down you go and down you go. And look at all. You're getting fractions in here and you're doing this, you're doing that. But he's getting there and there it is, getting closer and closer and down and down. And finally, after all of that, you got one, one, and one, and there's zero, four, zero, and there's your answer. But look at all you had to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I am lazy. I have a PhD in mathematics, in algebraic number theory, as a matter of fact. And one of the things that mathematicians learn to do is to do things in the easiest possible way. Just because there's another way to do it doesn't mean you want to do it the other way. And so I think you need to be taught the easiest way to do things. Now, clearly, the easiest way at home is to use Wolfram Alpha. My goodness. Um, this is... Um, uh, far and away, these. By the way, let me, let me show you Kramer's rule. This is another way. They, I don't think they taught you this in finite math. It's too complicated. I don't know. Maybe they taught you Kramer's rule. But here's Kramer's rule. Now, if you think that what we just did there is bad, here's another way to do it. It works. And in fact, this is it used to be in the old days. This there were certain problems that this is how you had to try to solve them. Here's the way to do it with Kramer's rule. How would you like to do that? Uh, you want to learn that? I don't think so. But you'll do it. You go down through here, and you just keep on going and going and going and going. And I'm not going to tell you what they're doing here. This is Kramer's rule. This is an algorithm. This is something our ancestors discovered. This is a way you can solve this problem. And it works, of course. And, and there's certain problems where they think Kramer's rule is the best way to go. And I don't know. I mean, when am I going to come to an end of this thing? Uh, it's using determinants, by the way, is what it's doing. It's using determinants and inverse uh, determinants and all that. To, to end up solving it, and just look at what is going on. I'm getting tired of uh, clicking on it here, going down. Uh, come up here and see if I can go down a little bit faster. I don't know, because I'm just showing it to you just to see what it is. If you get your own Wolfram Alpha, and finally, when you get all done, look at Kramer's rule. Look at it, look at it, look at it. There's the answer. <laughs> now, this is the way mathematics is. There's always lots of ways to do problems. And uh, Steve has taught you one way that I think is a horrible way to do it, Frank, frankly, all due respect to Steve. Uh, I suppose that he could argue or someone could argue pedagogically, well, that's easier than what, the, what Dr. Hain is showing you. Well, maybe so. Uh, I don't think so. Now, this is the way I'm going to do it. And now we're going to look at one more problem uh, that he covered in this particular video. Okay, you've got two equations in three variables. These are linear equations. 6x plus 2y plus z equals 10, 3y plus 4z equals 20. Now, I might just point out, uh, and maybe you'll do another video on it, this linear equation could be represented as a plane in the x, y, z space. If x and y are the planar coordinates, z would be the ordinate, this is a plane. This is another plane. So what you're really talking about here is the solutions are the intersection of the two planes, which is a straight line. So there's really an infinite number of solutions. Now, the facts are you can solve for any two of these variables in terms of the third one. It's your choice, really. The way uh, Steve did it, he ended up solving for X and Y in terms of Z. But the truth is you can solve for Y and Z in terms of X or um, uh, y, X and Z in terms of Y. you got choices. You can do whatever you want. Now, uh, he used matrices to do this, and I just do it with a simple algebra. Uh, I'm going to use z as going to be the variable that I'm going to let vary. So I'm going to go up here and take this first equation, solve for y, 
and that's going to give me one third of 20 minus 4z. I transfer, suppose the 4z divided by a third, there it is, or uh, 20 thirds minus 4 thirds z. Then I go up and take the top equation, I take uh, x, and if I, tra I take 10 uh, minus 2y minus z, and, and then and multiply both sides by 1 6, there it is. And now I can substitute for what y is in terms of z, and I do that, do a little simplification, and I end up down here now, x is uh, 5 18 uh, z minus 5 9 y is minus 4 thirds z plus 20 thirds. He used matrices to do this, quite frankly, I don't see why. Uh, it's just, to me, as easy to do just with straightforward, simple algebra. There's nothing more simple than linear algebra. We teach that. When we teach young uh, students math for the first time, the first thing we teach them is really, really simple linear algebra because that's uh, very, very easy to use. And now, of course, we could have done this with Wolfram Alpha, and we'll take a look at that next. Okay, I entered solve 6x plus 2y plus z equals 10 and 3y plus 4z equals 20, the problem we just looked at. And of course, these are two linear equations and three unknowns. And Wolfram Alpha pops out the result, only now it tells me what y and z are in terms of x. Remember, you've got choices here, and that's what it shows. Well, I wanted to know to solve for x and y in terms of z, so what I had to do is give Wolfram Alpha a little more explicit instruction. And I simply said solve for x and y, and then I put in the same two equations, and Wolfram Alpha gave me the same answer now that we just had. And of course, it'll show a step-by-step -step solution if need be. So uh, I frankly find Wolfram Alpha extremely useful for doing homework, and particularly then if you need a step-by-step -step solution, although a lot of times uh, uh, you might find a hybrid solution like I've been doing. For example, uh, as you saw in the early examples, uh, I start out and I do use an augmented matrix for a little bit, but then very quickly I get it to the point where I can apply a little simple algebra to it to get a solution. And I think that's what you need to do when you are, in fact, um, learning to do this manually. Now, frankly, uh, modern mathematicians don't do things manually anymore. This is really something you're being taught. It's old, um, really 200-year-old technology that our ancestors used before they had computers and all that sort of thing. And uh, you can argue that doing it manually has some value. You certainly need to understand what it is. I think, for example, you need to understand that each one of these equations represents a plane. And if you've got two of these equations, and if they are not parallel, they'll, they'll intersect in a straight line. That'll give you an infinite number of solutions. But if you've got three of them, and uh, no two of them are parallel, they'll intersect in a point. And this represents then the point, the x, y, and z point, where these three planes intersect. This is what you need to learn uh, geometrically when you do linear algebra. And uh, I don't know if you've been taught that or not, but that's just something to, to think about. And now one last thing I want to show you to do, and that is how problems can be easily created. Now let me show you how we these problems tend to be created to have simple solutions. Um, Let's say you want to make a problem up and you want the solution for x, y, and z to be minus 1, 2, and 3. Well, you just start out and you just write down some arbitrary things here with simple coefficients that you have. I just made that up arbitrarily. And then the question is, what are these going to be? Well, you do now what you used to do when you checked it. You plug in minus 1 for x, 2 for y, and 3 for z, and calculate that out. That'll be a minus 4 if I didn't make a mistake. And you do the same thing here and the same thing here, and you get 5 and 9. Now, this is the problem you give a student. Say, solve for this, and fine. Of course, after the student goes through all of their work, they're going to find the answers are here. It's easier to make up the problem, by the way, than it is to solve it. Now, I'll just remind you that I believe in using a combination of the augmented matrix and also the um, then solving it. So you've got a lot of choices here. Uh, you've got a plus 1, z, minus 1, and 3z. So you can easily get, make two of these zeros. You got a similar thing here, you can do that. I probably wouldn't use this one because two and three are not multiples of each other. I probably wouldn't use this one because two and three are not multiples. I would use the z column to get started. In fact, why don't you just do that? We'll work that out quickly and just see uh, what you get. Now remember, practice makes perfect. So you can make up problems like this and solve them, give them to your friends to play with. You can use Wolfram Alpha to, of course, check them out. Now let's look at, look at this problem. Uh, what did I say to do? I said, uh, let's leave... The, let's leave this row alone, so we're going to put in minus 2, 3, minus 1, and 5. Why am I doing that? 
Well, because if I just add this to this, that'll cancel out. So now I'm going to add this to this to put in the next row. So when I add minus z to z, I get zero. I add plus three to minus two, I get a one. I add minus two to plus three, I get a one. I add five to four, minus four, I get a one. Now down here, I've got to multiply by three and add. Multiply by three and add, I get a zero. Multiply by three and add, I get a 10. Multiply by three and add, and I get a minus four. Three and add, and I get a 24. Now I got what I need. I've got a zero here. I got, I got, uh, um, whoops, I'm not done yet. <laughs> Now I got to go another step. I've got to leave this alone, and now I've got to get a zero in, in, in either up here or up here, an extra zero. Well, the easy thing for me to do, I think, is to just multiply by four and add. So I'm going to take this top column, multiply, and so I'll write it in, and I'm going to take it and multiply it and add to here. So four times one to add to minus four is zero. Four times one is four added to ten is fourteen. Four times zero that's zero, and four times one added to twenty four is twenty eight. Now I'm where I want to be. Notice I only had to do two augmented matrices, and now I can do my solution. What have I got? I got 14y equals 28. So y is 2. Divide both sides by 14. Now I know y. So I come back up here, and I've got x is what? It's, my, it's 1 minus 2 times uh, uh, minus uh, 1 times y, which is minus 2. So that's x is minus 1. Now I know y and x. Now I can solve for z. I got minus z is equal to what? 5 minus uh, 3 times 2, which is minus 6. Uh, and then I got a minus, a minus, a minus. So I end up with a minus 2. And when I uh, calculate that out, that is uh, minus 8 plus 5 and minus 3. Multiply both sides by minus 1, you get z of 3. And indeed, that is the answer. So you can create a problem very easily. You can solve it using a combination of augmented matrix and then doing the solution. You want to get it down to where you've got a zero in one row, two zeros in the other row, and then the other row can be what it is. And then you just solve, boom, boom, boom. That's the easy way to do these problems. And that's the easiest way I know to do it. If I knew an easier way, if anybody knows an easier way, by all means, email me, uh, craigandhain.com, and tell me. I would love to know. I'm always looking for easier ways to do anything, as you should be too. So this is Craig Hain. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you do these particular kinds of problems. And indeed, I hope that you'll be able someday to get yourself a supercomputer because this is going to be absolutely invaluable to you if you actually end up doing math. Now, if all you're going to do is take the finite class and never do math again, uh, well, then it's a question as to whether it has a lot of other things it'll do, by the way. The supercomputer is a tremendous thing. It's got this Chromium browser, which is fantastic because it, it blocks ads, and it's just a great thing to do. It's got all kinds of other things. It's got programming languages of all kinds. It's got open office. You can do spreadsheets and everything. It's got games on it. It's got accessories and so on and so forth. And indeed, when you buy the supercomputer, you get a lot of training on how to use this Mathematica tool. Uh, way beyond what I've just taught you here. This is just the tippy tippy of the iceberg of what you can do with this Mathematica tool. So uh, you might want to go get a demonstration. Find somebody that has one to demonstrate it to you and you get to know it and see how it works and uh, you may want to get one yourself. Well, it just occurred to me you might want to know what a supercomputer actually is. It's this little computer right here. It's in the size of a deck of cards. If you go to supracomputer.org, you can learn all about it. It... Uh, has uh, four USB ports, has an Ethernet port if you don't have Wi-Fi, but usually you would hook it into Wi-Fi. It has um, an HDMI uh, input, and in fact, I have mine hooked to a TV set. This is a 24-inch TV set. It uh, cost me $98 at Walmart. It has a, an input for earphones, it, and this is where you plug in the power. It, it doesn't have a battery in it. you got to use power for it. It's like a little mini desktop computer. And all the magic of it is in this SD card back here in the back. In fact, this is a 30 gig SD card. And as a matter of fact, if you want security, you don't want anyone to see your data, you take out your SD card and store it somewhere, particularly when you're traveling and you're afraid you might lose it or get confiscated or lost. And then when you get there, you put your SD card back in and you're ready to go again. Uh, you can use, um, like I said, any keyboard you want. Uh, I usually use a wireless keyboard. In fact, the keyboard I've been using today I will just show you as this Logitech keyboard. I happen to like a touchpad. It's easy for me to carry this in my briefcase or backpack. Uh, 
I usually just plug it in if I'm traveling into a TV somewhere, like a hotel room or a, a friend's house. Just plug it into any kind of HDMI monitor so you don't have to take that with you. And this is it. Now, this does not replace your cell phone or your tablet or your notebook uh, computer. This, this doesn't do everything that those other things do, but it does things they won't do. The Mathematica tools are the most phenomenal things, but there's a lot of other things it does, too. It has a Linux operating system. It starts up very fast. It takes only about 30 seconds to start it up from scratch. And there's no updating all the time. There's, in fact, if you go to the supercomputer.org website, you'll see all the benefits. So that's what it is. That's what I've been talking about. Just FYI. So this is Craig Hain. My students sometimes call me Dr. Dell. And I will uh, hopefully uh, this will help you in your finite math course.